Well, hey, everybody. My name is Scott Morris. I'm from GTS Distribution, and I am joined today by Ken from Real Grand Games. And I am very excited about this. Real Grand is one of our biggest partners. They have been making games for decades, quite literally, um, and they are awesome. Uh, they make some of my favorite games. They get to grace my, my gaming table. And we're going to talk a lot about some of the stuff that's available right now and some of the stuff that's coming out. Got some really cool stuff to talk about. Um, as always, we're going to try and make this as discussive as possible, but if you are watching on YouTube and you have any questions, by all means, definitely feel free to leave a question down below in the comments. We'll be happy to get you answers to anything that you need. Of course, if you're feeling exceptionally awesome, you can give us a thumbs up. You can like this video. You can also subscribe to the channel to know when more webinars like this are available for you for our retailer customers. But Ken, my face was made for radio and nobody really came here to watch me talk. So I'm going to kick it over to you. Let's get started and talking about stuff and we'll see all the cool things that you have to share with us. Okay. Well, I'm Ken Hill from Rio Grande Games. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right. So uh, just a quick introduction, just in case folks who are not might be relatively new to the hobby or a new store that isn't aware of Rio Grande Games. Um, we're now 23 years plus of publishing games uh, worldwide. Um, for those of you who don't know, our founders started off by importing t t certain titles from Germany back before German games and the Euro game craze started. Um, and so we initially worked completely on, a, on a, almost a 100% uh, import business where we take titles from Germany and other places bring them into the US, do English translations and, and resell them. Um, then that model led to a combination of partnerships. And uh, also we've been doing more and more lately of our uh, the last 10 to 15 years of our own original titles. So we have a long history of classic titles. Everybody should know these Dominion, Race for the Galaxy, Power Grid, Concordia. Uh, those are just some of the some of the titles that that we've uh, been involved in either from our own our own production or with uh, partners um, in Europe and worldwide. And Concordia has <laughs> seen a bit of a, a kind of a more attention than than normal. Even I mean, Concordia is one of the best games on the market, in my opinion. It's such a very very tight, well made game. But the app has been fabulous, <laughs> and like I I keep seeing every time I go on social media, I see somebody posting about Concordia again, which is really awesome. Well, you know, it's one of the things that the digital products really tie in nicely with uh, with that. We have seen a big uptick in the in the um, demand for Concordia since the app has come out. So it all kind of works together. And one of the things that we've been doing recently, Scott, I know you're aware of this, is that we've been doing a lot more um, of putting our titles on Board Game Arena and Yukata and and uh, those types of sites. Um, we put Beyond the Sun, which is of course one of our big games from. 2020 and 2021 on uh, on Board Game Arena, and that did quite well for us there, and continues to get played quite a bit. You can play Race for the Galaxy um, on a number of platforms. You can play it on BGA. You can play it on an app, um, and the Dominion app for iOS and Android and Steam is currently in beta testing and is almost going to almost ready to be released. Yeah, the world. I'm actually a beta tester in that. And I can there say that go. it's coming along awesome. <laughs> and then we also have, uh, you know, Dominion.Games, which is the, the web-based interface. Uh, and that's been extremely popular. So um, we've been trying to take advantage of these multiple platforms. The, you know, uh, we want you to play our games and we're happy to, to, if you do it digitally, great. If you do it on Tabletop Simulator, that's great. If you do it, you know, with a physical copy, that's even better. So... Um, and I'll tell you, it never ceases to amaze me. Um, I, I still have this conversation from time to time with some retailers, but a, a digital release of the game does not cannibalize the physical sales of the game by any means whatsoever. In fact, in almost every case, whenever an app is released, we see an uptick in demand for that game because it, it becomes almost like its own marketing engine for the game where people are yeah. like, oh, I bought this $5 or $10 app and I love it, and but there's an actual physical thing and I can go buy it and put it on my table. And it just becomes that kind of necessary driver to get people to be like, I want this, I need this, I gotta go get it, which is really cool. Yeah, I, I've received dozens of emails <clears throat> or communications from people that have said, you know, I bought Beyond the Sun because 
uh, I got a chance to play it on BGA first and I wanted to be able to share it with my friends. So, um, and we'll talk more about Beyond the Sun later. Uh, the other thing that's unusual about Rio Grande Games is that we are a very, very strong supporter of distribution channel and retailers. Um, so I don't, I think we're kind of unique in the sense that we don't ever do any direct sales. We don't do any Kickstarters and we do not believe in any exclusives. So uh, we get people all the time that'll come to us and say, hey, you know, I want you to support my, my, you know, channel. Can you, you know, create a, a you know, a Kickstarter or a, not Kickstarter, but an exclusive promo for us? And the answer is always no. Uh, we want our customers to be able to have access to our games and there's no special treatment for anyone along the line. So um, you're not going to compete with us. We're not going to sell di games directly from our website. Uh, we don't sell games at conventions directly. So we are 100% um, for the retailer and for distribution. So um, again, I think that's unique among among the, I know it's unique among the larger, larger game companies. So that's just one of the things that sort of stay, that keeps us apart from, from other, so we're very much an old school um, you know, distribution model uh, company. I also put <clears throat> at the bottom of this slide, Mandy at Rio Grande, Grande Games and Cat at Rio Grande Games. Mandy is our retailer and distribution contact. And then of course, if you want to get in touch with me, it's, you can you can reach me at that email address. I'm happy to take questions uh, from people anytime. I answer them all day long, so I'm used to it. All right, so I want to talk about some 2022 products. Basically, Q2 2022 has been, wow, off the charts in terms of the stuff that's been coming out. We had a whole bunch of things in the pipeline, and they all sort of showed up at once. Um, we'll talk more about Dominion Allies here in a minute. We have a new game uh, called Glory Islands, which is a quite fun middleweight sort of super filler game. Um, and after a year and a half of struggling to keep Beyond the Sun in stock, we finally got a massive restock of that. So that should be available now, uh, finally, uh, in, in quantities that you, that you can get very easily. Um, we also have two new expansions, one for Concordia, Concordia Solitaria, which allows you to play Solitaire Concordia or one or two players uh, against a robot um, player and, uh, or I guess Automa is the correct term these days. We also have an expansion for pictures called Orange, which adds you know, more uh, tactile things for you to make pictures with. We also have two new games from the fertile mind of Freedom on Frieza, uh, Free Ride and Full Throttle. And I especially like both of these games. Uh, they're ex very accessible games. Teach the rules in five minutes, sit down and play. Um, free Ride has uh, been a big seller for us. And so if you have people that enjoy Ticket to Ride or the other train games, uh, Free Ride is very much in this, the same genre as, as, as Ticket to Ride and the other easy, easy to play train games that are, that are fun to get to the table. So all of that stuff that I just mentioned is out, is out now and is available to, uh, to be ordered. Coming up next month, I have April slash May because some of these things are, it all depends on which way the wind's going to blow and whether we're going to container ships get, uh, how fast they're going to get across the ocean. But we have three big titles, Dice Realms, Messina 1347, and the uh, recently announced second edition of Seaside, which is one of the, the most popular expansions for Dominion. Uh, it's getting a second edition. And there will also be update packs associated with that. So if you have, uh, if you own the first edition of Seaside, uh, your customers will not have to buy an entire new box. They just buy the upgrade pack. Those are pretty reasonable. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if we have the retail right off the top of my, our heads, but those will be very reasonable for people to pick up. You just buy one of those. You don't have to buy a whole new game to do that. But uh, this is the first of uh, a number of the second edition products that we're going to be releasing over the next few months, or I should say years as we, as we, go through and refresh Dominion and kind of bring it up to speed. So some cards will be leaving Seaside, some new cards will come in, so other cards will be tweaked. 
Uh, second edition is always always exciting. And of course, you know, Dominion is one of the most popular evergreen products that are out there, um, especially the past few years with with uh, with the pandemic. Uh, we've really been uh, struggling to keep second edition and big box and all those all those introductory Dominion products in stock. But uh, we're we're printing as fast as we can, so they should be available. And then in May, we have a. Uh, uh, a game that I know that Scott, you're excited about, right? Space Station Phoenix. I've been uh, I've been Very pumping this. So. Thing. I've been pumping this thing to Scott for two years, um, <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to say it's finally done. <clears throat> um, we also have the Race for the Galaxy Arc One expansion coming out. Now, this is all three expansions for Race for the Galaxy, which used to be available separately at a $25 uh, retail price. They're now going to be in one box, um, and this will be, uh, I think it's a $34.95 product, same as the base game, but you're going to get three expansions in there. Uh, takes the game up to six players, also includes a solo mode, uh, just chock full of stuff. That is a box full of Race for the Galaxy goodness. Um, those expansions haven't been available at retail now for a couple of years, so we're really expecting uh, a big push for that. And, of course, Race for the Galaxy base game, restock. Uh, we've been out of this at, at, at the uh, warehouse level for quite a while. Um, and it's coming It's coming back in. The lead times to print Race for the Galaxy right now have been incredible. Um, so we printed a lot to hopefully last us a long time. But you know, I'm super think, excited about Race for the Galaxy Arc 1. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the coolest things about your guys' catalog is that uh, you mentioned at the beginning about how you originally kind of started as like bringing in Euro games before the Euro craze started and everything. And while you guys do do, you know, core strategy games is what I would kind of call them. Yeah. It's not something that is only meant for a specific type of game. You have multiple themes, multiple broad reaching games, games that you could play with, you know, three or four friends digging in for like a night of like, this is like deep dive, we're going to go crazy. But then you have also games that are very casual and very approachable, right? Like Dominion to me, that's like a staple game. Like Dominion is a game that like, if you're a gamer, you either own it or you've played it, but it's so casual and so easy to teach, but yet it can be as like deceptively strategic as you want it to be with people. I mean, I've, I've played Dominion with Magic the Gathering champions. And let me tell you, it can be one of the most cutthroat experiences you've ever played in your life. Oh, yeah. At the same time, I played with my family and it can be one of the most casual experiences you can have as well, which I think is really, really cool when you look at it from a broad reaching capability. Yeah, well, of course, you know, Donald Vaccarino, who is the designer of Dominion, yep. was, was a Magic the Gathering. Yep. He actually worked for Wizards of the Coast back in the early days. And so that's where the inspiration came from. One of and, the OG uh, Magic guys. <laughs> yeah, one of those guys. And so, yeah, we've got that. And, you know, we also have a lot of games that, um, you know, that maybe off people's radar, like uh, Butterfly, which is a terrific little family game. And uh, that's, that's on board Game Arena. Uh, we still have that one in stock and people when they play it the first time uh, just kind of go they look at it and go well this looks like a kid's game and the kids are but if you play that with three or four gamers as adults that could be quite the experience because yeah uh, you're you're playing at a whole different level so it's the kind of game you can play with your eight-year-old and uh, but if you play with your with your adult friends it's going to be a different experience so I always like the phrase, a game that I can play with my grandkids or my grandparents, right? You know, things yeah. like that. Um, yeah. so you that's why you mentioned BGA, because I've, I've actually, uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks with Gamma and everything, talked to a bunch of retailers. And one retailer told me something that I never really thought of, like, instantaneously off the top of my head. But the more he talked about it, the more it made a lot of sense. Um, he yeah, basically has a like terminal set up in his store now that's just a, a laptop with a screen. And he has BGA running on it where he has like a account for the store, so to speak, like as an email for the store. And it allows people to try the game out right there because BGA has like those tutorial videos and things like that, that kind of walk people through it. Um, And he said that since he started doing that, he's had a lot of success with, Hey, let's put a game up there for the day, kind of surround the table with that you know game the boxes and everything for it and maybe the expansions if there's expansions for it but it's been really interesting to see how retailers kind of 
adapt to having those digital tools, but using them to be sales tools for in the store, which is really kind of neat. Yeah, well, like I said, we've been a big fan. So, I mean, we put Art Deco, uh, Art Deco, which is one of the uh, late uh, fourth quarter release. We have we have it on BGA. Uh, Race and Roll for the Galaxy is out there. New Frontiers is out there. Uh, we have Butterfly. We have Blue Skies. We have uh, uh, I'm going to forget some of the other ones, but uh, we're in the process of putting an older an older deck builder called Arctic Scavengers. Uh, which has you know been around for quite a while. We're, we're putting that on BGA, and uh, as more new titles start to come up, uh, we're we're thinking about moving there. The one thing you won't see on BGA is Dominion because we have exclusive right. contracts with uh, uh, with the uh, uh, you know the individuals who have those in place. But uh, basically, everything else is is fair game. So that makes sense. All right, so uh, that is what we're looking at for qu quarter two, and I'm gonna take a deep dive into some of the other titles here. Obviously, the big the big guy for us this quarter, anytime there's a new Dominion expansion, that's big news. We have Dominion Allies. Uh, this is the 14th expansion for Dominion. Uh, it's got 400, 400 new cards, including some new mechanics. You're gonna add allies to your, to your deck. Um, Retail price is forty four ninety five, in stock and shipping now, uh, but it's they're they're going uh, they're going like the proverbial you know hotcakes. Uh, anytime there's a new Dominion expansion, it's it's always a big thing. So, uh, <clears throat> if retailers have weren't aware of this and were, didn't have people coming through the door asking for these, uh, these are definitely out and available now, um, and uh, we expect this to do. To, to do quite well it's probably going to probably going to sell through the first container uh here pretty quickly but there's plenty of there's plenty more coming um but we're just super excited that dominion continues to you know be a, a, an evergreen product for us and every time we release a new expansion um, we attract more players and of course it expands the expands the available cards and um you know yeah, there are not many games that can say we're on our 14th expansion let it's alone true. that are on their 14th expansion and the base game still sells as as popularly as it does right it's this yeah. is this is really in a class of its own yeah it it's it is definitely a rare it is a it is a rare bird and um you know the, the thing about dominion is that people have their favorite expansions and we have and, and uh i certainly have my favorites but there's a little bit of everything for everybody. And it's just kind of like you can take and leave the cards. So that, you know, if you don't, if you don't like that particular mechanic, just don't play with it. You know, like there's a lot of people who don't like the attack cards. Well, just don't put them in. You yeah, don't have to extremely flexible. You don't have to play with those. You know, it's, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of support, like I said, digitally. And there's also tons of, you know, apps and, and for people to use for, you know, picking cards that they want to use. There's a, a great number of third-party products that are available on channel, on places like Etsy and, and other places to store and organize and keep track of your, you know, keep track of your Dominion stuff. So it is definitely a, uh, a, 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 you know, a hobby almost among itself, not to mention the fact that it invented an entire genre, right? Deck building. So um, anyway, Dominion Allies available now. Get it while they're hot. So speaking of hot, <clears throat> so Dice Realms, this is another game that we've been talking about for about two, two, about two or three years, I think. This is the latest game from Tom Lehman, who is the designer of Race for the Galaxy and also more, like, more recently Res Arcana, which is not our game, but also a fine game. Uh, this is a dice building game with customizable dice. So if you've played Dice Throne or played some of the uh, Roll for the Galaxy expansions that include the customizable dice. Um, basically, you've got a die with six faces that uh, faces plug into the dice and can be removed to make each dice um, a custom experience. So this is a really, really what we've, we've, every time we play this or show this to people, they say, oh, this is Dominion with dice. And so I think that's a, a really good way to describe it. Um, it comes with, well, I'll talk about what it comes with a little bit, a little bit later on, but uh, it's easy to learn and the games are fast. You can play two player game in about 15 minutes. 
Of course, you want to add a little, a little more time for three and four players. But if this is just something you want to pull out, sit down and play a quick game, you can play you know, two, three games in an hour. Um, it's really terrific for that. And of course, Tom is one of the outstanding game designers uh, that's, that's producing games today. He, his products are always going to be well-balanced, well-tested. He has thousands of hours and thousands of play tests of this thing. So um, I was going to say, this is one that I remember you were talking about last year. And if, if I understand it right, it was really around Tom wanting to make sure this is as, like perfect as it can be to, to get to, you know, to the launch of everything. Yeah. This is, I'm, this is probably of everything in your catalog. Me personally, I'm most excited about this one, this game. Tom, like you said, his name is synonymous with great games. He does great, great job. But the concept of this game and just the look of this game is so up my alley. Like I'm, I'm a thousand percent in on this one when this one comes out. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> we are um, in the press. This one should be out here uh, next month, probably early next month. We're still waiting on on the last of the shipments to to reach. But this one we're really excited about. And again, I think we've, you know, we've got fantastic art. I think the, um, but the rules are not intimidating and you're not going to have, um, th th there's a definitely low bar to entry here. We've got some really good tutorials in the, in the rule book. Um, we've got some very good um, resources for there, you know, to tell you exactly how to play your first game and how everything works. So even the more casual gamers can, can pick this up pretty, pretty readily. Uh, so I will show, so let's talk a little bit about Dice Realms itself. So this is sort of a, um, a 3D uh, mock-up of, of the components. You can see that we've got some customizable dice there in the foreground. The little, the little gray tool is what you use to pry the, pry the die, die face off to replace it. You're going to see uh, here in the foreground as well that there's five tiles, and those are sort of like your kingdom cards for um, for Dominion. That's going to be the scenario. That's going to be the the conditions under which this particular game is played. And each one of those comes with their own set of customizable die faces that, that can be purchased and put on your dice. So each player starts the game with with two dice, and uh, <clears throat> They uh, will roll the dice. There's also a fate die that gets rolled every round that will tell you whether oh you have to pay food or you don't or you get this little this little buff. You you decide exactly how you're going to you know work your kingdom. Are you going to focus on food or mining or if it's a game with uh, attacks, you can also you can put some game uh, put some emphasis on defense. But you're everybody's all this is happening simultaneously. The game moves along really really quickly. And so there's not a lot of downtime. You're not sitting there waiting for somebody to take their turn. It's, there's a lot of action and things are happening. There are some, some cards and die faces in the game that allow negative impact to players, kind of like the attack cards in Dominion. And if people don't want to play with those, you can certainly play, play the game without those. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of game there, even without the, without, without the attacks. The game itself also comes with these three of these trays where there's one shown here. Um, and so there's over 650 die faces that come in this, in this game, along with dice, lots of wooden bits. Uh, there's three big trays to help you keep everything organized. Um, you know, it's just a really nice package. People are going to enjoy playing this one. And uh, you know, what's funny. I I love Rattlebones. I still have. Oh, I see now. There you go. I was I didn't even mention Rattlebones because I figured it was so far back in the past. <laughs> I love Rattlebones. I, I love everything about it. In fact, I love it so much. When you guys had the dice on BGG, that I bought like bags of those dice just to use for like custom prototypes and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I remember the the very first time I played Rattlebones, and, and I'm a big Civilization player. I love Sid Meier's Sid Six. I love Humankind. I love all kinds of hex-based kind of, you know, civ building, city building type games. And I remember playing Rattlebones. I remember saying to myself, man, it'd be really cool if somebody built like a civilization game with this kind of mechanic or a, a city building game with this type of mechanic. So you you are literally quite, quite 
directly manifesting my prophecy, which I love. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're this one has been a, been about four or five years in the making, and again, we're really excited to have this out. Um, and we expect it to do to do really well. Uh, and <clears throat> again, a, a game from Tom is just something that you don't get don't get a chance to get a brand new game from Tom every every year. So uh, we're really excited about this. So Dice Realm should be available for pre-order now, I assume, and then it should be right. coming into stores, uh, hopefully by mid, late April at the, at the latest. So that is Dice Realms. All right, now, <clears throat> uh, you're gonna have to excuse me a little bit because Space Station Phoenix is a game that I have personally worked on for five years. Uh, it's probably the most excited I've ever been about a, a, a new game release. Um, this one has just been a ton of fun to work on, and I think it's one of the most unique and interesting games that uh, that you're going to see. Really excited to get this one out. So, what you what should you know about Space Station Phoenix? Well, it's you know we're kind of uh, we're kind of known for our space games, and this is going to be another space game to put in our to to put in the notch. Um, if you like, if you have your, if you have customers that enjoy Beyond the Sun or Terraforming Mars, Race for the Galaxy, this is this is going to scratch that same itch. Um, it's got a really strong theme. Uh, you do feel like you're building a space station because the bits and everything uh, are are um, there's slots where you put everything into a into a board. You feel like you're actually building a space station, which is part of the game. The turns are fast. They're fun and they're highly interactive. There's one mechanic in the game that allows players to benefit when other players take certain actions. And so <clears throat> this is one of those games where you're gonna be constantly paying attention to what other players are doing on their turn because you wanna get the benefit that you're, um, you're entitled to from them taking a particular action. This one is just leaving Europe from our factory um, actually in the last couple of days, we expect it to be in stores in May. And uh, oh my gosh, it's been five years that we've worked on on this thing. But it just, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And, you know, I, I just couldn't be more excited about this, this particular game. So how it works, uh, we got a little 3D mock-up here. This is one, which you can see in the foreground is one player's play area. Uh, on the left there, they've got some ship cards. Those are the ships that, that use your action, that essentially represent your actions during the game. Then the player board that's in front of you is your space station. You start with a hub. Those hubs give you not only your starting resources, but they give you special powers during the game. And then the central board there basically keeps track of uh, the guilds and <clears throat> the number of aliens that are still available in the alien pool because hey, you, you got to have some population to make your space station work. And then on the on the right there is the number of the remaining number of station parts that can be built. So um, sort of the fun story behind this one is that uh, the Galactic Council has, has uh, discovered this little blue planet in a small solar system kind of off the beaten path. And they think that they're just about ready to have the technology to create, you know, uh, space travel. So everybody wants to get in early on the on the new on the new planet. So the Galactic Council has asked people to build space stations, kind of far away from this little blue planet, so nobody gets suspicious, but close enough for you know to be open for business when when the time comes. So the your players are the players are kind of scrappy entrepreneurs who are trying to trying to make a quick buck. So every player starts with a small fleet of ships that represent their actions but you're trying to build a space station and populate it with aliens and the occasional human. Uh, the primary way to get the metal that you need to build is by dismantling the ships that, that you brought with you. So unlike most games where you start off with a small ability to build something and you, and as the game goes on, you get a better, you know, you improve your engine and you do things to make, to make more actions. This game, you start off with the most actions that you would possibly have during the game. And as the game goes on, you're constantly whittling those down and, and making your options 
fewer instead of more during the game. What you're trying to do is make those actions more efficient and more effective, but uh, that can be that can be more challenging than than, um, than it seems. And the the fun thing about this is those ships can be used by any player on the board by simply paying you an extra an extra fee. So not all the, the actions that you have sitting in front of you are not necessarily your actions. So especially later in the game. There's lots of jockeying for position and trying to get to be able to use the actions that people need to use to, to finish their station. It's just a blast. We played the uh, the first couple of games with one of my sample copies uh, two weeks ago, and everybody at the table was just having a terrific time and was ready to they were they were ready to go buy a copy you know right then and there. It's such a good game. I'm looking forward to having it get out to people's hands. Uh, we'll have tutorial videos, uh, like uh, professional pr tutorial videos from John Gets Games, and lots of other things to support this. But it's a it's a fairly straightforward game to learn, uh, and it's it's just so much fun that I can't wait I can't wait for people to try it. I love the look of it. You know, the whole the, the player board with having the different shapes involved and everything. Like it just th this looks like a game that if I'm looking at it on the table, whether it's like a you know. At, at the retailers out on a table or whether I'm seeing friends play it or anything like that. Like this just looks immediately like I want to know what's going on. Right. There, there's, there's dice, there's cubes, there's these strange shapes. There's like, what does this mean? What does that mean? Like th this just begs a gamer to come ask what's going on with it, which is really cool looking. Yeah. We've got, there's a ton of, there's a ton of iconography in here, but it's all, it's all very simple. Once you, once you know the game, the, one of the great things about this game too, is that there are, only a certain number of station parts that are available during each game. And we've got 20 of these starting hubs um, and there's 72 different station parts. So in a four player a game, we, we did a, we did a calculation and the, and the number of possible variations was in the, oh, it was in the hundreds of billions or some, it was some gigantic number. So you're never going to get the same game twice. Nice. Uh, That's awesome. So, <clears throat> And every game is going to be determined by, uh, you know, player skill. There's very little luck in this game. We have some dice. You do get to roll dice, which, hey, who doesn't like to roll dice? So that's a little bit of luck. But everything else is all depends on what, uh, you know, how well you manage your little fleet of ships and how well you can you can keep up with your keep up with your opponents. Um, like I said, this is just just fantastic and. It took us two years to get the art done because we wanted to make sure that the art, the art really um, conveyed the, the, the theme. And all of these, you can see all these little pieces are interlocking, so they have notches. So everything's gonna, like, you're, you're gonna build the space station as you play the game and everything fits into these, into these little notches so they don't, things aren't, components aren't wandering across the table. Uh, the cards are full bleed, very, very colorful all the way to the borders. Uh, it's chock full of tons of wood bits. All of those wood little aliens are, are nice chunky wood bits. Um, so like I said, we're super excited about this one and, and can't wait to, for people to play it. All right, and that is Space Station Phoenix. Whew. Now, if that wasn't enough, we have the latest Vladimir Sushi game, Messina 1347. Uh, this was a big hit at Essen last year. We have a partnership with Delicious Games over in the Czech Republic. Um, Vlad is this, also designed Underwater Cities. He was the co-designer of Praga, Kaput Regni, which was out last year. Um, this is going to be another you know, big hit for him. It was in all the top fives, top threes of the, of the buzz from, from Essen from last year. Because of some production delays, uh, over in the Czech Republic, where these games were produced, it took us a while to get those get them into the country, but they're finally on their on their way. Uh, we expect them to be here in uh, in May. It should be in stores in May, and this is another terrific game from from Vladimir. Uh, super excited to get this one out in front of uh, our English speaking audience in in America and uh, in all parts around the world. Again, this is a medium to medium heavy kind of game. It's uh, 45 to 90 minutes. Uh, you're fighting the plague in Messina in the Middle Ages. So you get to deal with rats, 
and it's got lots of little wooden rats in it. Who doesn't like little wooden rats? It's the, the theme is great. Uh, it has a solo mode for people who like that. The solo modes are becoming more and more. Um, people really enjoy those. And again, it's a lots of initial buzz. So you're going to have customers asking for this as soon as they know that it's going to be available. Um, really looking forward to having this one in uh, in the market. We've been trying to get it over here since November, and it's just taken us this long to get the games produced and, and get them since on the boat. Since 1347, right? <laughs> so, not, not quite since 1347, but definitely since November. I understand. <clears throat> so, and again, we've had a very, very productive partnership with Delicious Games, and uh, they, uh, like Underwater Cities, has been terrific. Prague has been terrific uh, for us. And, and those are, you know, still titles that you can order today. Underwater Cities continues to sell very, very well. Uh, the Underwater Cities expansion continues to sell very, very well. And this is just the next, the next great game in this in this line. So very excited to have have a partnership with Delicious, and um, you know, this is just this is just another another really really good game for for folks to check out. All right. Um, so those are the three big things that I wanted to talk about. Um, now I've got a couple things to talk about as for 20, the rest of remaining 2022. This is sort of the world premiere. Yes, you heard that right. This is the first time I've ever shown this cover art, but that is the Beyond the Sun expansion cover. The expansion is called Leaders of the New Dawn. And uh, we, uh, the design team, myself included for Beyond the Sun has been working on this one for a while. We think this is going to be um, one of the great expansions. Our hope is that once people play with this new expansion for Beyond the Sun, that they'll, they'll, they'll never want to play the base game without it. Um, the major mechanic that we're adding is leaders. People will draft uh, two, uh, uh, two leaders at the beginning of the game, which will add some special abilities for you to have during the game and those just open up <clears throat> a whole world new world of possibilities of course there's more systems there's more technologies there's more uh, events there's more of everything to, to add to the game we've also included a the, one of the biggest requests we've had is for a solo mode for beyond the sun this is now going to include a solo mode um, when and that's going to be uh, super popular with those people who like who like that stuff. The solo mode is challenging but fair, I would say. Uh, the designer um, of the main game uh, designed the solo game, and he has trouble beating it. Although some of my alpha playtesters can can give it a pretty good run for its money, but uh, we're super excited about this. Leaders of the New Dawn. Um, we're just about finished with the rules editing. And I'm hoping that we'll have it available here towards the end of the summer. If not sooner, it all depends on whether we can get the factory, you know, how soon the factory can, can, get, can get, uh, get it produced and get it over here. Wow, that looks great. BTS has done phenomenal. And it's, you know, it's quickly risen up the ranks, so to speak. But uh, this looks like it could be even better for it. I love the idea of the solo kind of play for it and everything. Because <clears throat> that's definitely a game that when I've played it, I've been like, man, it'd be really cool to, Kind of jam this out solo when you want to, when you can't get a you know group together or anything. So that's really really cool. Yeah, and like I said, we we've included more of what everybody likes, and it's all modular, so you can include the things that you like and what you don't like. But I think the leaders are going to be. It's just it just adds such an interesting dimension to the game. We've also included two new factions, which are a lot of fun. <clears throat> uh, they have some code names, which might be, get people interested. Uh, one, one of them is codenamed Magic 8-Ball, and then we have another one that's codenamed Voltron. So you can you can think about what those factions might, might I be. I approve that. <laughs> so um, that's what they're, not what they're actually called in the game, but that's what we've given it. Uh, what's interesting about this was we had this expansion pretty much all wrapped up, and we thought, oh, this is going to be great. And we took it out, kind of gave it its first public viewing last summer, <clears throat> and we were shocked to find out that we had missed the mark on a number of things. And what we got back from some our testers was, well, this just isn't very interesting. It's just not very fun. So we went kind of back to the drawing board with the leaders and just said, okay, we've got to add more 
you got to make these things more fun and more interesting. And uh, so we we really listened to our our the first round of our our testers and went back. And now now people are really being blown away by it. So uh, th this is this is going to be great. And I think the fans of the game and there I know there are lots of them out there that uh, are are just chomping at the bit to get their hands on this. But uh, it's it's going to be a really nice addition. And it's the first of what we hope will be many expansions for Beyond the Sun. We have another one on the on the drawing board that we can hopefully get out uh, also this year, be a small expansion. We have plenty of other things planned. So look forward to that, Beyond the Sun, Leaders of the New Dawn. Uh, we're also uh, expansion for New Frontiers, which is Tom Lehman's Race for the Galaxy board game. Uh, that one's called Starry Rift. Uh, that one's just about finished in testing. We're hoping to get it get it out by the end of the year. Um, <clears throat> as we mentioned, there's refresh Race of the Galaxy expansions that we talked about earlier. Uh, those will be out in May. And then we have just, uh, I have got a full pipeline of some really terrific games that, again, right now that the, uh, the climate is making it difficult to get new products pushed through all the plants that we deal with are running at full capacity, over capacity. And of course, we're still dealing with COVID issues, especially uh, in some parts of Europe. But we're doing the best we can to get, to get the games out and also keep up with the demand for our evergreen products. So it's a challenge. But, uh, you know, I look at new products practically every day. And, um, you know, I'm not going to bring a new product into the pipeline that I'm not super interested and excited about to play. So, I, I think we've got some great things coming in, in the years, years to come. And, you know, we really thank all of our retail partners and all of our distribution partners for the success for the, and, and uh, over the past couple of years, especially during these difficult times. But we're, we're Grounded Games is here for our partners, and uh, we hope that you will, you know, keep our, keep our products on your shelves and keep us in, in your thoughts as we continue to work through this fun pandemic. That's all I have, Scott. What else? Got any questions for me? Uh, no, you covered quite a bit. Um, I, I double down on your sentiments about the last few months and, and you know, working together as teams between us and the retailers and you and distribution, distribution partners. It's, it's been a uh, roller coaster of a ride for lack of a more colorful phrase. So definitely want to double down on that. Um, no, you know, one of the things that I always kind of talk about on these webinars, and I think is a really good thing to talk about because, you know, we just got past Gamma and there is always new retailers kind of coming into the, the industry yep. as a fold. Um, I'm a big believer in brands first, games second. And what I mean by that is if you look at our top partners and Rio Grande's in our top 10, I mean, uh, when I say one of our biggest partners, like I don't, I don't say that lightly in terms of, you know, the amount of games that they sell in our board game category. So um, when you look at companies that have a, a long, long foundation in this industry, people who have been around, like you said, 23 years, you've literally been doing this for decades. You've kind of ridden the highs and the lows, been on the ups and on the downs and, and kind of seen a lot happening in the industry on its own. But when you look at the, the games that you make, your brand of Rio Grande says a lot to a gamer and a lot to the consumers that walk into the retail stores. And not every, I mean, it's very rare that someone buys every single game from a publisher. There are completionists, there are collectionists, there are a lot of people that will do that. But when you're talking about the casual foot traffic, the people that walk into your store, the people that are maybe exploring for the first time, or maybe even are new customers, being able to see that name, Rio Grande Games, on every different type of game that's out there from Dominion to Beyond the Sun to Race for the Galaxy to Roll for the Galaxy, things like that, there is a wide breadth of games. So depending on what I like, maybe I don't like science fiction. Maybe I like medieval type stuff. Well, suddenly Dominion becomes something I can look at. Maybe I love science fiction and Beyond the Sun or Underwater Cities is something I can dig into. There's kind of something for everybody, right? Um, and I, I think that that's really important. You know, when I think about being a retailer, when I think about merchandising the product, when I think about putting things together in my store to make them appealing to the consumers that come in, having large lines from a single publisher is a very appealing thing. 
And I think you guys have done a great job, obviously, over the past 23 years. You're continuing to do a very good job. I think more than anything, you guys have a great finger on the pulse of the strategy game. Like when you think about the people who are the core hobby gamers, and I don't mean like alpha, hardcore, like, you know, diehard gamers. There are those people out there, but I mean the midweight to heavyweight strategy gamers, the, the people that are very broad and can play a lot of different games. You guys have a really good finger on the pulse, not just from what they want from a game perspective, but what they want from a product perspective. And I think that's really important. I mean, you, you kind of showed it before with Starship, right? I mean, it's just the look of the games make you want to play the game, right? And that that's a really important thing. So I think you guys do a great job with that. So yeah. Well, hey, thanks, Scott. And you know, it's I, I do want to just point out a couple of things. I mean, what you say is about a breadth of line. I mean, there, there's literally dozens of games in our catalog that I haven't talked about. Like, for example, we have a whole series of two-player abstract games. Yeah. So if you're into those, the GIF series is there. Um, we obviously have one of the one of the most fantastic partnership uh, games ever, you know, there's bridge and then there's teach you and, yep. you know, teach you has been selling, we've been selling uh, thousands of copies of teach you, you know, for, for years. So we've got a little bit of everything. We try to appeal to, you know, our core audience as, as much as we can. Yeah. Um, but if you're, if you're new, if you're a new retailer and you're listening to this for the first time and you've made it all the way through the hour, I mean, you should definitely have all of, all of our core products, if you don't carry them already, Race of the Galaxy, Power Grid, Concordia, um, Dominion, those are all those are all staples and your customers are going to be looking for those. Um, feel free to reach out to us at any time. We're, we're here to help. We can give advice on, on you know, what you what to carry. Uh, we're here for you and we're definitely here to help support the, um, the retail channel. That's awesome. And just um, retailers also, so you know, I'll have a link in the video description below that will take you to a list of all the Rio Grande games that are available at GTS. So you'll be able to link right to that and be able to search through and kind of filter out however you want to filter out. But that'll be a great kind of starting point as well. So, well, awesome. Well, Ken, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Come talk to the retailers. As always, as, we, as we've talked about, we've had you on before. We'd love to have you on again. So this is not a one and done by any means. Clearly, you've been doing this for a very long time. So we highly doubt that this is a one and done. There's going to be nope. more games and more good stuff to talk about. So we're happy to have you back when you have the time. And right. retailers, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I know everyone is very busy, busy in their stores. I know everyone is Got so many different things to do just to kind of keep the lights on, the wheels rolling kind of thing, but really do appreciate your engagement and your involvement with these. Again, if you're feeling really awesome, feel free to give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you like this video. If you have questions, definitely feel free. Let us know below in the comments. We'll be happy to get back to you. But until we see you next time, thanks so much for watching and have a great week in your stores. Take care.